polar acts, not just in Alaska, in you know, Nevada as well. Um, we are in copper, gold and silver, not fashion metals, not here today, gone tomorrow. They've been around for thousands of years and I'll certainly see all of us out. Like you, I'm a minerals investor myself and I'm usually looking for three different things. Firstly, is always people. Um, you know, every time you come to something, make sure you've got good people on it. Good people don't waste their time on projects that don't work. They really don't. And our team, we've got two doctorate geologists. They are the magic. It's not me. You know, I'm a business guy. I'm a chartered accountant. And you would have read or heard this from me many times. If it doesn't make sense, we don't do it. It's purely based on commerce. It's purely based on making a return. So we're not about going to find something just for the sake of it. We're about finding something to make us money because we're amongst the biggest shareholders. Some of the bigger holders there are Rupper Gold Fund, Lundin Mining, um, obviously us, US Global, and, and a host of uh, Asian and large uh, Australian individuals, in fact. Um, the top 20 is pretty tight. Uh, there's not a lot of retail in it. We've really funded this largely to date on rights issues from our existing holders, but it really is time to take a, a bit bigger swing and I'll show you why as we go through this. Um, I can go back a slide, I can. We're in North America, not in Australia. Um, we chose North America for two reasons, really. One is uh, it's on the Pacific Rim of Fire, and if you want to find a big one, that's where they all are. Um, it's, it's literally the best big-scale minerals address in the world, and we're, we've really chosen Alaska first, secondly, Nevada. Nevada, really, because it gives us near-year-round coverage and activity, whereas Alaska's a shorter season, uh, and it really did restrict us. A bit more on those later. Um, I've only got 15 minutes, so uh, we're a little pushed for time. I won't labour this at all, but year-round activity, just as I said, um, you know, it's either feasibility study or it's drilling or it's uh, waiting for results or it's uh, getting on ground and securing new drill targets. Let's go to Nevada, what I would call immediate uh, return. It's one of the things I look for in investment. As you just heard, it's sandwiched between two decent sized mines. It's literally right next to a 5 million ounce gold mine, and it's just north of a 400 million ounce and 3 million ounce silver mine. So we're in good territory. Um, the reason we chose it was this next slide. And I'll come back to this. It's not often you see grades like that. And no, that's not a misprint. That's 3,300 grams a tonne gold in rock chip samples. You know, it's 100 ounces a tonne. You're not going to hear that, that number again today or tomorrow or yesterday. I can assure you with that. It's right next to a 5 million ounce producing heat bleach mine. And that tells you two things. Heat bleach, you can mine at very, lo very low cost and very low grade. And that tells me it takes low grade material. And on top of the hills, the higher grade stuff. And it's in a, a deposit, which is found in the 1860s and has not been worked in any meaningful way and never drilled at all, but it hasn't been worked since 1927. There's probably nobody in this room that can remember 1927, but things have changed. And they've changed in a big way in the mining industry. We'll come back to this. South of us is this, the 400 million ounces at, uh, at Rochester. And what we find is we, I'm going to flip back a slide or two, as we go from that northern claim at Black Canyon to the southern one at 4th of July, it goes from being gold dominant next to a gold mine to being silver dominant next to a silver mine which is exactly, really, what you want to see. Um, no surprises there. The first thing we did when we got to this was got on the ground and literally started to truth it. Um, we knew we could get high-grade rock chip samples. No need to eyeball those, but there's just scores and scores of 1,000 grams per tonne silver on that. Um, it really is very nice stuff. We got on the ground to uh, do some soil sampling. Hello, we can't go forward. Let's go in. Here we go. And what did we find? We found big, broad soil samples. Some of those are uh, three or more kilometres long by a couple of kilometres wide. That tells us there's likely to be scale. It's not just the high-grade veins that are carrying these grades. It's in a lot of material potentially outside of that. Again, it's been very sparsely drilled. There's only a few holes into this in the past. And we think they've missed it because they didn't actually do the soil sampling that we've just done. 
It was also fragmented tenure in the past. We've had to expand that and turn it into something that's actually a workable size. No point drilling a postage stamp to find you can't mine it and you don't have access to it. So we've, uh, we've been busy in the background. We've only had this project since March this year. You know, this was a good idea this time last year. It took us several months to prove it to ourselves. But silver and gold down at the 4th of July, it's um, mainly con uh, what I would call fairly consistent. Gold's largely where the silver is, but there's quite a bit outside of it as well. Heading, next slide. Um, there it was as they parked it up in 1927. Largely hand mechanisation at the time, as you could imagine. Uh, not particularly big scale, but big scale for the day. Um, now, obviously, with today's metals prices, things have changed a lot. We will be drilling that in the near term, so there's your immediacy. And likewise, up at Black Canyon, there are the veins we were talking about in the hillside there, and there's more than one set of them. There are several sets of veins here that are even over a kilometre long um, with, and you can eyeball those numbers, hits within them in the hundreds of grams per tonne. Now, we're not really, as you can see from the bottom uh, slide there, that uh, these veins are pretty big. Um, they're actually more extensive even than that. There's one that's 1.2 kilometres long, um, never been drilled, and at the bottom of the hill there is that 5 million ounce gold mine. It's not remote either, that's the I-80 highway right behind it, which stretches from San Francisco right the way to, through to New York. So, you know, we're in a good spot. We're an hour and a half from Reno, and it's not just a casino town, it's also a mining town. Um, that's your immediacy, and that's, that's the one thing I think will be your investment sugar hit in the near term. That's certainly what's keeping us excited just at the moment. We're back on the ground again at the end of this month. Moving up to Alaska. We chose this for its geology yet again. Um, when you look there, there are some very big mines. There are some very high-grade mines too. Most of you uh, in this crowd will be familiar with Pogo, which is Northern Star's mine today. But, you know, there's, there's a couple of hundred million ounces there on recently discovered projects which give us a lot of comfort that we've got something similar because we know we've got similar geology to them. Let's just get it in perspective. We were the first to consolidate this region into one project. So what you're seeing there was the first time anybody's really had it all together as one position. It's 35 kilometres from east to west as you go along that trend where it's been soil sampled. There's gold or copper in just about every location. Where there isn't, it's under glacial cover. Just in terms of perspective, that's from here to Kalamunda. So next time you drive that, just bear that in mind. It's a big patch of ground with some big soil anomalies. Some of those out to the right there are literally 11 kilometres long by 8 kilometres wide. Never been drilled. Moving on, we've got two main projects here. Um, if you add the two together, in broad terms, they're about 6 million tonnes, a little over, at about 3% copper equivalent. You can do the fast maths on that. It's uh, you know, Sandfire, I think 12 years ago, got up on about 7 million tonnes at 5% copper, but on a significantly less share price, or, or copper price, I should say. So there's probably enough, there, even now, to start eyeballing what we think we might have. But Zackley itself, it's good grade. It's, um, we know we've got the best part of five kilometres of potential trend here. The bit to the left marked in red where the line is, is the only part that represents the resource to date. And you can see there are holes and decent hits outside of that that aren't in the reserve yet, or resource yet, I should say. We know we can extend it. We know we've got two and a half kilometres of trend there. We've never tested at all. So that in itself uh, has a lot more legs in it. It's largely gold more than copper dominated as you head east. Uh, but it's not entirely, it, you know, it, uh, it varies from being gold to copper dominated. It's actually in a, a mineralised SCARN system, which can only, the gold in which can only have come from a porphyry system. This really gave us a hint early on that we were looking at something quite substantial here, um, which, for which I guess exactly was very much the evidence that it must exist. Moving down to Caridu Caribou Dome, it's quite different exactly. This is copper only, with a bit of silver in it as well. It's about half an ounce of silver. 
it is very common to go and drill 50 metres here at 5% copper. It's high grade. And when you see it, you know you're in it, and it seems to be quite dependable on the lenses once you know you've dialled them in. It's fairly complex in the way the lenses are stacked together. It's uh, not been easy to extend it in any direction, but it is still open in every direction. Um, it's open at depth. When you drill it deeper in twin holes, you can still twin those, those grades. But if you eyeball those for a second, there's countless holes there to 10 or 12, 15 metres at 3, 4, 5, even 10 or 15% copper. You know, it's very grady. A third of that resource of nearly 3 million tonnes at 3% is in the top 150 metres, and it's nearly 5%. It's about 4.5. What we're doing at the moment is looking at joining the two of those things together, exactly gold and copper and caribou, copper only, into a feasibility uh, position. So we're doing a scoping study right now to try and get to what I would call critical mass. You know, do we have enough there right now to go to production if we want it? That doesn't mean you have to do it today, but it does mean every drill hole adds to something that's an economic position. So again, there's the accountant thinking, not the geologist. Because we don't want to waste holes on things that don't add value necessarily. If you can add a drill metre to an existing resource which looks like it will be a mine, then you know you've just made yourself some money with it. Um, when you drill it, it looks like that. Um, beautiful chalcopyra, that's probably run 10 to 15%, that sample there. Uh, when you're in it, you're in it, and it's very obvious to you. Now, we, um, we looked at this in detail last, uh, last winter in Alaska, and we could see that there was a very strong correlation between IP and where the copper was. So we looked elsewhere down the hill and we could see a number of other large IP signatures and thought, hmm, correlation copper IP, let's go and drill those. So we did that this season. We got four holes into it and I'm happy to say in every hole we got copper. But it didn't look anything at all like that. In fact, what you've got is something out on the right there, which is literally native copper in lava. So we know copper and IP seem to, be, seem to correlate, but it's not necessarily always chalcopyrite. So down here is quite different. It's, it's something much more akin to say, uh, a project or a number of them in the Keweenaw Peninsula in Michigan, where they in fact mined over five million tonnes of copper metal and provided much of Australia's, of Australia's, America's supply uh, for, for many, many years. Um, it's an unusual deposit, but it's not unusual for North America. We also know we drilled those holes up to 1.1 kilometres apart and 300 metres wide for the four. So we know it's big. We know there's a lot more of this too. Um, it's just something that's very new to us and we've still yet to get our heads around it. Obviously we need to assay it, so it's in, in the system at the moment. But assuming it assays up all right, we know we've got a lot more of it. And, you know, that really does matter to us. Um, I'm reliably informed that yeah, baby is in fact a geologic term, um, which is what you, what you use to describe something you wished you'd just found. So that's gone quite well. Um, that I would call, you know, the, uh, the Zachley and Caribou Dome thing together with uh, the prospect of feasibility work being done right now, potentially an economic unit, is pretty much your visibility to short-term cash flow, you know. We will know quite soon by the end of this year how that hangs together right now with current economics. So there's your immediate, there's your visibility of short-term cash flow. One of the other things I look for is just simply scale. Every now and then, could you really win lotto and find something that might be a 30, 40, 50 year mine life? And I mentioned earlier, this thing is on a big system. That uh, soil's sampling uh, anomaly up there to the right is 11 kilometres long but nearly 8 kilometres wide. It is never to this day been drilled. Gemini and Jupiter uh, as targets have never seen a drill hole into them. What we've done is what you have to do as a junior without diluting yourself out of the market and chase those things we know we can do at our size. So exactly in Caribou has been the focus. We've extended those and we're starting to bring them into the realm of economic. 
We did get a hole into Mars, though, and what we discovered was... Now, it's not that surprising, because there it is on the left there. It's bright green staring into the face. We knew there was copper. But when we drilled it, we're into porphyritic alteration. We know we've got a porphyry there. Uh, we just defined that. It's not a major that's looked at it doesn't agree with us. Um, we are in the throes at the moment of negotiations to achieve another joint venture uh, with another large partner to go and drill this properly. We know it needs a 40 or $50 million investment to, uh, to bring that home to a large-scale mine. Now, we're not into the porphyry system uh, proper yet. You know, we're into the halo around it. These things you know, are intrusions with large alteration halos around them but we're definitely into the system. Now, you'll ask, well, why don't you go and drill that up yourself, Polarex? Well, here's the answer to that, is that you know, we're a $28 million company at the moment. To spend or commit 40 or 50 million with not that much shareholder backing and share price to pursue that dream just dilutes us out of the picture. You are far better off to harness the shortage everybody knows is coming, knows is coming in the copper market enlist the major on it and do it quickly. So you can literally throw 30, 40, 50 million dollars at this over three or four years with certainty that the bank balance is there to do that and still emerge with half of it. So that's precisely the way we're going to approach this and that is exactly the discussions we've been having with people. So there is, there is your long-term big hit potential and I'll leave you with this thought on it as well. You know, if you Go forward one. If you knew nothing about anything here and you hadn't started at Zachary and Mars, and we started there because we knew the most about them, you'd be drilling Gemini and Jupiter. That's where you'd be. And that, in fact, is where this really needs to be taken. But it's beyond our cash flow to do that. So, again, partnering up with a major will deliver that. Now, when we do that, what I've just showed you, we keep. So we keep Zachary, Caribou, we keep uh, Nevada. So in essence, really what you've got there, and I'm going to scroll back some slides to finish this. One more. That's it. You can see the future today. If we were in the middle of a hill in Nevada with nothing around us at all, with those rock chip samples, and we're about to drill it, I would think that's pretty ambitious. Um, good luck to you, but gee, it looks good. When it's right next to a five million ounce gold mine, it's not hard to see some success occurring there. And when it occurs, you know, what we're seeing is not just a few grab samples here and there in an old mine shaft. When it occurs with that scale of alteration, and this is just one of three or four of these, next to a mine of that size at the bottom of the hill, you've got probably the best chance you're ever going to have of drilling up a mine very, very quickly. So with that in mind, that's Polarex. It's worth a look. If you want an immediate sugar hit, there it is. We're going to drill that very shortly. And if you want the longer term, we've got that too. And with the longer term, we won't burn ourselves trying to do it. This is not about pursuing dreams. It's about actually making money for us. And if you're part of us, you too. Thank you.